Okay, so um, Jenny, well done. You are um, practice oral uh, volunteer of the year. How does how does that feel? It feels lovely. It feels really nice. It was a big surprise, um, and yeah, it's a lovely feeling. Yeah. So, I mean, your 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 nominator for this uh, because you didn't nominate yourself. It was uh, somebody nominated you. I mean, th they pointed at two particular initiatives that you had uh, amongst the many that that you that you had. Um, a lot to do with and one of them was the uh, foundations for knowledge exchange course yeah uh, and and then the other one was the mentoring stuff uh, so i mean probably there but you, then you can you can expand on and so you can expand on those so um, foundations of knowledge exchange i mean this this sort of was a a, a new course that took over from the uh, <coughs> from the original fundamentals of tech transfer or maybe supplemented it that's been going for ages i mean what, what was the thinking behind that it was really interesting, actually. It, it was very much around the coming together of mm -hmm. both Oral and Praxis Unico, as was. And when we merged, yeah. there was a real recognition that knowledge exchange encompasses much more than tech transfer in general. Tech, tech transfer has a very particular skill set within that. But knowledge exchange is very wide. Mm -hmm. um, and I came from the oral side of things. So, so and I, I work in a business school, as, as, as do you, Jeff. So obviously we're not, we're not tech transfer, uh, particularly, but on other parts of knowledge exchange, which is so much of a wide spectrum. And we were really keen to develop a course for people who'd maybe just moved into knowledge exchange. They might have been new to the university sector or be doing something else that really looked at the huge range of activities and skills that are present within a knowledge exchange role, particularly going into the age of the CAF and the KE Concord, that, that was where it came from. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, for, for instance, I mean, what, what um, give, give an example of one of the, 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 the sessions that you thought, well, that, that's really not tech transfer, but it, but it, it, it really is important for the, for in the new generation, uh, where it's all about impact, um, to, uh, you know, to, 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 ha to have a, a greater appreciation. Sure, yeah. Uh, one of the sessions was on, uh, well, I mean, there's a, there's a variety of stuff that's very relevant to that, including looking at the whole history of policy uh, and how that's driven KE and the impetus for universities to be economically responsible, as it were. Um, but specifically, we had we did a session on working with stakeholders, which as somebody working in KE in general, has to work with a huge variety of stakeholders from charities to organisations, individuals. Working in knowledge exchange, those stakeholders could encompass community groups, businesses, other organisations, local authorities, for example. And we wanted to look at how you might work differently with those groups of stakeholders. So for somebody in a wide KE role that might be in a business school, for example, supporting small firms to grow. It might be some public engagement work, um, it might be a community initiative, doing some public art, that type of thing. So uh, very wide. Yeah. And you know, I remember the early days of, uh, of, of practice um, when we were putting together the original courses. And you know, for, for, for some of the sessions, it was really difficult to find the expert. I mean, th there are lots of people who kind of think they know how to do it, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's, it's put, been put down into any sort of body of knowledge, which can be com communicated to, to anybody. We, we're not, we don't fully know what we're doing yet. I mean, is this something that, that, that you found? Yeah, and, and something I'm really passionate about in terms of practice oral in general is the coming together of the community to share experience. I think that knowledge exchange jobs are fairly unique in universities and mm. in other professions too. And I think that sharing of that expertise and the knowledge of when things went right, but also when things went very wrong, is incredibly useful. And I don't see us as trainers as there to teach specific uh, kind of bodies of knowledge, but it's more about facilitating people to develop their own what what do you offer the volunteer? What do you think the equation is? What's a quid pro quo? Why are the, why are they doing this? Good question. I think um, a lot of reasons. I think people want to come because they genuinely want to share their experience. So, for example, in this course, we had a when ke goes wrong panel, um, mm. and I think people do want to share that because there generally is a good story at the end of how they turned it around. Um, but also, I think people get a lot out of engaging with the rest of their community across the UK. As I said, I think KE roles are fairly unique and I think that bringing people together to kind of share that is really useful. So I think people get that out of it as well. And I think that they also learn from others and what has happened and they kind of realise that they are in something which is reflecting what KE is today 
um, which is exactly how we are developing the courses and how we're hoping to be able to run the courses. Yeah, so it, that, I guess that was an oblique way of saying what you get out of it, uh, you know, because it, it is a drain. I mean, anybody who's put together a course knows the amount of, of heartache that there is and, uh, you know, getting other people to do things. You're not yeah. mad them, you're getting them to volunteer. So it, it is a drain. So what, I mean, what, 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 what's the other side of the equation for you? Uh, well, it's fun as well. And I, I, I get to work with uh, Stuart from Oxford and Alistair from Imperial and, and we were the kind of co-course directors together. And Stuart obviously particularly has a, a long history of uh, an experience in, in developing these. So we really relied on his experience. But it, it was just a lot of fun working together. And as I say, kind of thinking about our roles and about our universities in a in a in a more sort of strategic way i guess and how we link to that policy and yeah i just it's really enjoyable it's absolutely hard work you're totally right um but i really enjoy it and a great sense of achievement at the end of it as well as also learning stuff yourself and does it detract from the day job i mean clearly what we're trying to do here between you and i is to say it's great being a, a, a volunteer because we want loads more of them within <laughs> So yeah, that would be good. What you say, but nevertheless, it can be a huge um, distraction from the day job. I mean, how does how does the university and how does your manager view all this? Is it a, oh dear, you're doing that sort of thing again, or is it? Oh, actually, <laughs> that's what it actually the networks that you create with Stuart and others, it, it 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 kind of puts us on the map and it puts you on the map, and 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 these are useful things for you to have professionally. Yeah, very supportive of that. And also, for example, as part of the course, uh, Hamish McAlpine from Research England did a, did a spot for us. So yeah. that in itself is very useful on the CAF. It's obviously something that we're thinking a lot about at the moment. So we're taking the learning back in for that. And it's also part of kind of citizenship uh, of the community, essentially, uh, and developing something. So, yeah, a lot of support. But you are right. It's, it is a lot of work. Yeah. I mean, the hallmark of any profession is that the, I'm going to say now, the, the elder generation, oh dear, uh, that's, that's insulted you, but the elder generation, <laughs> oh, it, 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 it does, it, they do, you, you should get back to the next generation. I mean, this part of being a profession is that there's this constant, train, constant uh, transfer of knowledge from those who have done to, to those who are about to. Uh, and also back the other way, so actual exchange too, of what's new in the sector, ideas about how to engage differently so obviously now the whole world has changed and we're thinking a lot more about our digital offerings and we want to learn from our members about that as well so from those people who are coming up too yeah yeah marvelous and now on to the mentoring thing because i mean this sure. is uh, I, I this is this is all kind of new to me I, I didn't actually realize this was going on at such scale so what's the i, mean, I think this very much came from the oral side of things as well didn't it when it did, yeah, and, and we developed a, a fairly light touch mentoring program um, for oral. And to reiterate a lot of what I've already said, essentially, it's about people who've been experienced in the role for some time, wanting to give back to those who may be new. Um, and we developed a more structured process um, in Praxis Oral, which I think has worked really well. So it would be a 10 week program um, of people working together and we'd match them on their job roles but also on their skill levels and what people really wanted to learn which can actually be really tricky in knowledge exchange because there are a huge raft of job titles um, and different responsibilities within that role um, and we gave some training to, to the mentors before we started on how to mentor effectively a lot of people have done it before and we will be relaunching it again next year as well but i think uh, we, we've had a lot of positive feedback from it um, yeah. And again, for me, it's actually been a really enjoyable experience talking to people um, about how they solve their problems, which essentially is what mentoring is. Yeah, yeah. I, it, it just struck me that, you know, the, the, the courses is, is delivering something at scale. Uh, and it, it kind of becomes a, a, a blueprint that you, I mean, obviously you, you refresh it the whole time. Whereas the mentoring, I, I, yeah, I mean, I run a mentoring network as well um, down, down at um, LBS. And and that really does take an, an awful lot of work because this is one-on-one -on -one matching. So I, I, I you know, that, that 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 impresses me that you're doing all that as a volunteer, uh, probably more than the courses because it, it's all the one to one, it's so scalable. I mean, I have to, uh, uh, of course, explain that that practice oral office do a huge amount of that work as well. So I'm kind of working with them to develop that. Mm. Um, and and you're right, the matching can be a challenge and. Obviously, sometimes it's not exactly the right match. So then we then we start again. I think that we're learning throughout that process as well. But broadly, as I say, I think it's been successful. I think people have been really happy with the support they've got, and they are continuing those relationships 
past mm. that 10 week period, which I think is the, that's the key indicator, isn't it? It is a key indicator. Well, I had to the extent to which people keep in touch afterwards and of course yeah. I want a new mentee. So is that the, uh, the, the large extent of the sort of the, you know, the, the, the volunteering? I mean, I actually hate that word volunteering because as you said, it, it really is a give get model. I mean, you, yeah. you're in, in everything I've done, I've done it actually because I wanted to and because of all the networks that it builds and the fun and the excitement of the stage and the and the satis and the pure intrinsic satisfaction of it all. Um, sorry, I'm taking over now. I didn't mean to do that. But I, it, it, I agree it, with you, though. I agree with you very much. Yeah. Um, and so you almost don't need an award. I mean, that's the way <laughs> that's the way I felt it. Very nice to have it. Uh, <laughs> but has the award made any difference to to uh, you know wh wh where, where do you keep it in the in the toilet or on top of the bookcase in your in your it's office? On the, it's on the mantelpiece downstairs. It's very heavy. It's like, it's, yeah. a, it's a it's a good bit of good bit of award. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, it's just it it's, it it gives you a. a a really nice feeling of being appreciated which again as you say is, is not something you do it for but it's but it's lovely to receive it i've also had a lot of people contact me um off the back of it which has been great um cool. and kind of rekindled some older relationships with stuff that we want to develop more of which has been really nice yeah. um so yeah it's been, it's been fantastic okay and just uh, the, the the relationship with the practice oral office i mean obviously th th they are supporting volunteers. I mean, I always see it that it's the practitioners who are coming up with fun initiatives, fun initiatives, which are, they think are valuable and, and are worth doing. Um, and then it, it is the practice oral office that actually enable that to happen. And, and that's the marvellous thing about this association is we've got this, this body of people who want to do stuff. And then we have this marvellous office that in, enables it all. Absolutely. And they are incredibly dedicated. And it's the kind of thing where to, to have the best type of training or the best type of mentoring, you make it look very easy and smooth. Mm. And actually, it's the, it's the classic, uh, the, the, the duck paddling underneath the water, the swan paddling underneath the water. And that, that's all the office doing a fantastic job. And because they have a lot of experience, they just cover every single base and make it very easy for the kind of practical elements. So, yeah, it's been great working with them. Yeah. Well, look, I'm not going to take up any more of your time. Well okay. done on this. And um, yeah, it's brilliant. Uh, both the, uh, the, 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 the new course uh, and, and the mentoring program and all the rest of the stuff you do. And the, the nicest thing that I've heard from you this morning is that you actually do it because you want to and, it, and it's great fun. Yeah. And so it Excuse isn't me. actually, it's, volu it's volunteering, but it's very much give, get and to the right sort of person, it's just a pleasure to give. Yes, I, I, I completely agree. It's all the meetings that I have with colleagues about this, it's just, we, we always say that it's fun. It's a really nice way to, to, to start your day when you have those, those meetings. Okay. Brilliant. All right, so you're at home. This is, uh, you're in the throes of, of COVID. Has, has, work, has work become, you know, you've really got to be careful what you say now. Has work <laughs> become more busy or less busy at, at home? I mean, uh, uh, during or during this COVID period, has, has activity ramped up or? Yeah, it, it really has, actually. And I think possibly like many of us, I thought that it, there would be a quiet period. Um, so I have research, et cetera, that I, that I want to be able to get done. But actually, it's really ramped up. So obviously teaching is, is being completely transformed um, in a kind of incredible way. But also a lot of the knowledge exchange work um, has just completely ramped up. There's a lot of funding opportunities out there and people are responding really quickly um, to how we tackle uh, society effectively. As I say, I'm in a business school, that's what we look at. Um, so yeah, it's been busy, but I really like that because I like being busy when I'm working at home because you need something, it's got to keep you going. Otherwise the days just drag. <laughs> yeah, there's no chance of that. <laughs> Uh, well, I sincerely hope we get together for uh, one of the uh, professional development meetings down at yeah, the NCO. Uh, yeah. They're fun as well, and the breakfasts we have there. Uh, so let's hope we can uh, get past this and get back uh, face to face. Absolutely. Uh, Lovely to talk to you. Take care, Jeff. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.